So we so so far we've seen how to add an application, right? We added an application into into this. Let me show you. Um, since you got some some of you are asking about media framework, right? So I did that with the team in Korea. We did the media framework, right? So let me just show you same thing. Um, in my packages, where's my not the uh, packages? I added also something called audio demo, right? So it's just an, it's a very simple application. Starts play, plays with music, right? So you know, as I if I if I go here, let me go, let me show you. Look, it's magically installed. So there's audio demo, right? Bam. <laughs> and you can start playing. See here. Okay. You can stop playing. That's it. Okay, it's very very simple, um, but we were by doing this we were illustrating how it we modified um, uh, the 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 framework to simply do log. Okay. So hold on a second. So if I do start. So hold on, some too much too much information going on here. Uh, is this the same ADB shell? A, ADB ADB shell log cat. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of stuff going on, but that's that's what we. Uh -huh, there, there it is, media player. Right, so that that stuff is all being uh, printed from our own code. So we modify the framework to be able to log what's going on, for instance, right? So we'll see that later on, okay? When we get to that point, we're just doing this like simplest thing first, and then we're making it harder and harder, okay? So so far you saw how to add an application, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, next thing that we're going to look at is a couple of config files. Oh, by the way, if you want to add a native a, a library, like for example, if you wanted to include something in system lib folder, right? That's even simpler because you um, you actually don't even you you just need to put it in. A, it's not packages external. It's just in slash external, right? And then you don't even need to create a make file, but you don't even need to make a, a add it to the make file. In this case, it's actually going to traverse all the make files. So this is not necessary, but it's recommended. And you run a mm to make it. So we're not going to do that, but that's how you would add a native library. Okay, that's even simpler than what we did. Um, so what if you you were asking about system services and changing what's running and how it's running and all that. All that stuff is in a file called initRC, right? Um, bef that initRC file, when it's all done, where's my, so control C, when it's all done, that initRC file is right here. So it's on the file system right here, right? That's installed on the file system. I'm now logged into the device. So notice that there are two initRCs. There's the goldfish and then there's the initRC uh, regular, right? So what, do you remember what goldfish is? Emulator, right? Yeah. And this is the regular. So this is basically the main one, then this goes on top of it, right? Now, this is where it's installed. Let's see where we install it from. So we install it from... Let me close this... Um, let me see, close some of this build, close build, close out, I'll leave out open. Actually, let me close out. So we install it from a system, right? Sys system core, 
So system core root door, right? That's where it's uh, all this stuff. So root directory, and that's our init rc file right here. So I'm going to open it, and this is what it looks like. So basically, let me go to the beginning of this file. So basically, this is our init rc file. It basically, you know, specifies a couple of, like, log level, things like that. These are the system variables, right? Remember how I said only LD library, only um, system uh, lib is in the LD library path. This is where that's specified. It's just a simple export, right? So if you want to configure the environment, this way you would do it. Um, this is creating now some symbolic links. We're actually making the mount points. So in Android, um, it's slightly different than a normal flavor of Linux because we don't have FS tab file, right? Like, you know, in Linux, you have a, you, I guess, you know how that works? You have a file that specifies all the mount points and all that, right? On a regular Linux. It's not like that. So we actually make a directory, then we mount something onto that directory. Right? So we're making, see, this is where we are making our slash system. We're then setting the permissions for, for that directory. Right? Making uh, secure storage for um, um, apps on SD card. Right? We are writing um, some information here. We're changing the privileges for various directories. Okay? We're mounting file systems. Okay? So there's where we are mounting user data, system, cache, right? Yet another file system, right? The file system system. This is where we're mounting root file system read only. Okay. Changing on, uh, ownership of system. Um So we're making the structure for a file system, okay? Uh, we're uh, doing all that. This is where we're setting the properties. You guys were asking about properties, right? So these are the various properties that we're that we're adjusting, like such as how much memory, for example, foreground applications have, right? Uh, how visible memory space, um, you know, home application memory, hidden application memory, and so on and so on. So those settings are here. Okay. Uh, these are various uh, system servers and daemons permissions, right? So this is for radio. So this is where we're starting various um, radio re uh, related things. Way clocks. Okay. These are various uh, TCP buffers for for Wi-Fi, Edge, GPRS, right? So the, the various uh, settings. Okay, so those are settings. Mm -hmm. This is where we now start starting services, right? This is where it's actually starting services. Remember when we were talking about this yesterday, we had this map, right? And I said, this is what happens, right? I said, everything starts here. That's what we're looking at. Okay? So, another, so this is another way of looking at it. So, a line, you know, this line here, 270. Now we are at the beginning. We are now starting these guys. Okay? So that's what we're doing. We're starting these guys. Um, so basically, um, there's a document that explains what which one of these means, okay? So, the, and that document is this document that I specified here. Hold on. System core init readme, okay? So that explains what is what, okay? So let me show you. So system core... Um, system core in it, um, where's in it, read me. So it's right here. So in this document, it tells you uh, what it means to start. So these are various act services, right? Name, so name, path, argument, and then options. Options can be one of these, right? It's critical. It's disabled. Set environment properties, right? Sockets, if, it's, if a service requires a socket, right? User. 
which user it's going to run on. Like, in other words, is, is, is a specific service going to run as uh, radio, right? Or is it going to run as shell, or is it going to run as ADB, that sort of stuff, right? Group permissions. One shot means just try it once. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? Um, you know, and so on. So these are various triggers, and so, uh, et cetera, right? So this is a useful file that we can do. This, this is basically everything that is possible. These are the mounts, right? Read only, read write, remount, and so on, so on, right? So, so that, that's what uh, various things mean and how to set them, okay? This is some examples and so on, right? So let's look at the real file. So we are now starting daemons, right? So we're starting the console, that's the shell. So it's a console, it's disable user shell group log, right? So you wanna have root permissions? root, change this, right, bam, so now the shell is owned by the root, right, although our shell is already a super user, so we don't need to worry about that, right, so ADB, by default, it's disabled, right, but we can enable it by changing the setting, so there's basically layers or init that go on top of each other, should we start, uh, should we start ADB? Right? Well, it depends on the property. Right? Is it is it a QMU, which means emulator? Right? Emulator is running on. You know, you guys know what QMU is? Huh? So QMU is is the virtualization engine that emulator runs on top of. So I don't know if it's going to open, but that's the page. It's an open source um, um, engine for virtualization. That's what virtualizes the hardware, makes it the ARM, right? Oh, it, it will open, right? So that's that's what that is. So it's an open source processor <coughs> emulator. So it pro emulates a process. That's what uh, we are using for emulate, for this. Okay. So we're starting ADB. We're stopping it if enabled is false. Okay. So at this point, ADB started. Now we're starting the service manager. Okay? Right? Now we're starting a service manager. Do you remember <coughs> service manager? Let's take a look at, uh, at PS again. So if I do PS, remember service system server? That was a uh, system service manager, right? Right? So that's our... Uh, uh, service manager. It's critical, right? Um, uh, so that's that's basically that one. Now, notice that um, it's going to restart Zygote and Media if it goes down. So let me try something. Let me try it just for fun. Uh, so service manager is 28, right? PID 28. Zygote is PID 33, right? So let's kill dash 9 28 bam okay I kill I killed it let's see 28 doesn't exist anymore right but service manager got restarted it's got a totally different process ID and it caused uh, zygote to restart as well since zygote is no longer 33. In medias, so basically this restarted, this restarted, this restarted. So you can set sort of the uh, dependencies, right, between these. Okay. So that's basically the service manager important one, right? So it's critical. So now we're starting vol vol diff, uh, right? We are starting netd debugger. This is your radio. Some of you, some of you care about the radios. This is the radio daemon. Radio daemon runs as a native service, and then uh, <coughs> Android connects to it via a socket. So it's actually right, it works over a socket. Okay. It doesn't work over AIDL. So a radio is sort of different. It's not very typical for Android. Right. Uh, so so that's radio. Zygote. 
So we're we're starting zygote. So these are parameters for zygote. Um, it's basically it's devilish. Uh, it's gonna on restart on any of these. So it, when power restarts and so on and so on. When media or net D restart, media server. So this is for audio, camera, graphics, etc. So that's basically our media server starts there. Boot, bootable, and so on. So these are some some other processes. Let's start uh, key store, and that's that. So this is one of our uh, init RCs, right? On top of this, we have the other init RC, which is the um, the one that starts for well, this is low memory one. So this is setting some proper properties for low memory and so on. But you can have multiple init RCs and for different purposes. Okay. So does that make sense a little bit now? How it how to configure what starts and how what the order it starts and importance and all that stuff, right? So read this file; it's useful, right? The init language. So it's got its own init language, right? Okay. Questions on that? Permissions. How do you cha change the permissions? How do we configure what is allowed uh, uh, users on Android? Right. How do we configure if some of this? If this is a rooted phone or not? Right. How do we configure if, if radio runs as a radio user or runs as nobody? Right. How do we configure that stuff? There is no password file. There's no etc password file. Okay. It's sort of hidden. Like in Android. This is where the uh, this stuff is. So it's actually in. It's not in init. It's not in rooter, but it's in the private. So it's right here. Uh, so system system core include and then in private. There's this file dot h. So basically, this stuff gets compiled into the operating system, right? So this is where we're configuring various permissions. Let me start at the beginning. So these are the various um, uh, user group uh, numbers, right? U um, UIDs, GIDs, right? So radio, Bluetooth, graphics, audio, camera, log, compass, and so on. So they all have their own UIDs, right? Yeah? There's our shell, right? Shell user, ADB debug shell users, right? You have to remake the operating system. Yeah, so you would, if you make a change in here, you would then do a make afterwards and then rebuild the uh, system.img, right? So this, these are U UIDs. Now this is where we're we're defining um, who can do which which user runs what, right? So for example, root is UID such and such. System is UID such and such. Radio is UID such and such. Right? That's what we're mapping them. Okay. So next we are configuring the paths. We're saying which path is owned by what okay so you know how I said normally you cannot change your uh, your data data per permission uh, system because it's owned by system system right like what if I wanted to make this be readable by anyone like you probably do not want to do this but what if I did this or it's probably gonna be seven seven six right but we don't want to do that, right? So um, SD card is owned by root, right? I can change a permission that nobody can read to SD card, right? I can change that here, okay? Right? Uh, so that's basically <coughs> that. Rules, rules for files. So this is where basically this is for directories. This is for files, okay? 
who can change what file, right? Uh, so th that's who owns what, right? File system configuration. This is basically what's configuring our file system and we are assigning those UIDs for various file systems, right? So that's that's where that's configured, okay? In terms of in terms of permissions. Does that make sense? That file? Yeah. Uh, there's one more file that I wanted to show you, um, and it's called. Um, Uh, let me see. So there's one more file in the file system. If you go and cd into system, system, uh, etc, permissions, okay. So platform dot xml file so cat platform dot xml file this is where we are mapping uh, uh, permissions to uids so remember how we had to specify uh, ask for a permission from a user right so remember for example um, bluetooth internet camera right external storage okay so app, an app that has a, a high level Android permission, right, external storage, that maps to a Linux partition, uh, permission called C, uh, SD card read write, which is defined then in this file here, you know, that's where somewhere there's going to be that per permission, right, SD card read write, or it's going to be at least the user, right, so it's right here, right. Make sense? So that maps to that UID, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, for example, that. Uh, we also looked at the other ones that we had. Oh, access um, find location and access core location. So those are just shell UIDs, right? Remember how we ask in our application? So that's what, that's what that means, right? So, so that's that's a little bit about permissions. So, does that does that make sense? Um, how permissions work? A little bit. I mean, this is from a low level. This is not from an Android level. I have a whole other presentation on just security on Android. But this is just so you know how to change uh, this in a in a you know. ROM, right, in the actual system build. So, uh, so that's that's that. So, any questions on this, or everyone good? Okay. So, modifying frameworks. This is probably one of those hardest things to do, right? Because now we're looking at okay. So we have this entire platform, you want to modify a, pla a, a framework from top to bottom, right? From an application all the way down to the drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay? So how do we do that? It really depends on a framework, right? It really depends on which framework uh, you, you, you worry about. So let me first show you, uh, so let's see. So typically, this is just an example for sensor framework. We can look at the sensor, sensor framework later on, but we have basically the Java manager is here, okay? The JNI code is here. The actual C implementation of, of that code or the header file is at least here, okay? But you guys were more interested in audio, right? Or mi multimedia, right? So multi uh, multimedia basically is audio and then video, right? Those two things surface right so um, by the way you have the details of this uh, is sorry the details of this is at um, you can find it here uh, multimedia so there's your audio 
right? There's your video and camera, right? So it, this will tell you also a little more details how to configure it, what those things are, what libraries they are, and so on. So it's this document here under multimedia audio and so on. Yeah. So let's take a look. So this is what happens when you want to play a song, right? So this is our application. Remember, we have our application called Audio Demo. Okay. Let's look at that application first, and then we're going to look down to all the parts, right? Audio Demo. Hold on a second. Audio Demo. Let me close all this. <laughs> Don't worry, it fails to make. That's because we kept the build automatically turned off, right? So that's fine. Um, so this is our audio demo, right? So what we have here is we have the um, media player, okay? So we have something called media player, and we simply say media player create, right? And we point to a file that we want to play, and that file is right here in resources. So there it is, just an MP3 file, MP4. So we're saying media player play this song, right? That's it. And then we say start playing and stop playing. Those are just those two buttons. You press start, it calls this. You press stop, it calls that. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Make sense? So that is... that. Well, let me show you the big picture. That is... Where's the? Uh, uh -huh. That is this, right? So our media play audio demo calls media player. Okay. Where is media player? Where's this file? Right, so the, so on the file, so this is yeah, it's part of the media server, but on the on the file system, um, it is. Oops, on the file system, all this stuff is typically in frameworks base, okay. So there's frameworks base media, okay. Now, you notice that there's typically going to be these two directories. So, kind of like regardless of which framework you're chasing, you're going to notice that there's Java and then there's JNI folder. Okay? That's very typical. So, in this case, let's take a look at Java. So, in Java, we have Android Media. By the way, notice this files, iAudio Service iMedia scanner, um, and so on. What do you think they are? They're AIDL files, right? Right? Just like we talked about earlier today. But, in this case, I'm interested in media player. Okay, let's open. Oops. That's my... Me okay, let me close this and close this. Okay. And close this. Close this. Okay, so this is our media player. So what I did is I simply added this line. I found the start. So this is when I when I call media player start, it calls. It, it, this is my line of code. Okay, let me show you. So when we we go here, we say media player start. Okay, so that is going to call this line of code, this function, this method, right? And what we're doing here is we're saying stay awake to grab a wake clock, and then we're calling a start. Okay? But what is start? So this is a JNI call, right? Okay? So remember how I said this is why it's important to know JNI, because this is normally it would be like. <gasps> Right? And you're stuck here. You don't know how to go any further, how to cross that line into C, right? So now we know. So, so that's basically what that file is. Okay? Um, if you look at it like this, so that's where we're now crossing from blue to green. 
right? So this is our world of Java and the world of C, right? Draw a line here, okay? Make sense? So now we got to look at where is this JNI file? Well, it's like I said, it's most likely going to be right here somewhere, right? So there's JNI. And then in here we have something called Media Player CPP. Hmm, maybe that's the one. Let's see. So this is basically, this is the, so how do you know this is the name, how do I know this is the file that we're looking at? Because remember, it's the naming convention. So it's going to be, and so it's going to be the package. So remember, this is in, ah, uh, I shouldn't have done it this way. Uh, what, what line am I looking at? About 300 something. Uh, Start. Okay, I can. So that we are in package called Android Media and then Media Player dot Java, right? So that means that this is gonna be called Android Media Media Player and then Start. Okay, so that's why it's in this thing. So what I did here is first of all I added a little, I, I added this line to to log, to the log file, so that we know that that's where we're starting at, right? And by the way, um, lo logging, as I said, is supported both in C and in Java, so it's the same log cat, right? So log cat, you can do from bo both, so that's why it's doing this. Okay. Um, so what we have here is we are creating something called media player, okay? Get media player, passing the environment, so we get this thing called media player, which I don't know what it is yet. And then we are saying media player process the media player uh, call, right? So process media player call, and we're saying media player start. Okay? So now we would need to figure out what, what, what is media player and how do we find that media player, right? So you can now search inside of this file and you can be like, okay, where is the media player? Okay, so this is returning the media player, right? So it's returning the the this this thing, media player, uh, get in field. So we're basically finding it from there, right? And this is processing the media player call. So, um, what I did is I documented these steps. In uh, in a file, so let me um, let me show you what I did. Uh, so I have a file called mediaplayer.txt. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to put it in the, um, so you, if you guys want to download this, right, so you can, I can put it in my, uh, into this folder, downloads. So you can copy it from here, okay. But basically, these are, this is sort of what's calling what. So you, again, if you want to copy this file, it's in here, so just refresh this directory, right. So 10.4.5.1.6.1 and then downloads. And so there's your media player.txt. Okay. So it's basically I'm saying what is calling what. So our application in package apps audio demo is calling media player start. Then media player in framework base on and so on, it's calling start. Then that is calling the native <laughs> method underscore start. Then that is calling the framework's base, uh, the JNI method. <laughs> called st uh, Android Media Media Player Start. Then that is calling Media Player Start, which is now calling a library, a lib media, which is Android based media lib media, right? So there's a, something called here called Start. And you can kind of drill down all the way to the drivers and all that stuff, right? 
<coughs> but you kind of see how we're looking. Now, in this case, we don't have any IDL per se yet, right? But you can see how we're looking for all this stuff, right? Make sense? So lib media, let me just, that one we did not open. So um, let me minimize this. Uh, so media, so this was Java, this was J9, and there was also lib media here, which had media player. Media player CPP, right? Media player CPP. Right, so that's where this is the C++ file that's implementing that, right? Okay. So now that is using another media player and a local media player class uh, uh, variable, setting it up, starting it, and all, and all that. I just added this to kind of know that that's that's what's going on. Okay. So far, so good. So, uh, so this is this is how media uh, one part of media works, right? So this is the example of audio because it's the simplest, but it's very similar thing for video. It's very similar thing for you know recording and so on. So this sort of gives you the map of that, right? So this was this was a recording would work like that. Now, if you care about video, it's again, it would, it's an, it's a different picture, but it's very similar. So there's a there's a picture for video, right? So again, same stuff. There's your line here, Java C, right? Oh, look! Now we have a binder call in C, but it's the same binder call, right? So it's connecting via binder to C, and so on. Right. Okay. So that's documented here. So, um, so any does that make sense? How you would go about finding this? So audio, video, camera, that stuff is documented. Um, sensors are um, so not quite kind of documented, um, and telephony is kind of doc is kind of documented right telephony is actually using a socket so I'm not gonna that's sort of different than anything else so let's take a look at uh, um, our location remember our location doesn't work because it doesn't know the location it doesn't have the last known location so what if I wanted to fix that I want to modify my location framework to actually give me some location on the emulator maybe just hard code it so let's see where that comes from and just like we did in this um, um, media player at TXT, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to save it for, um, um, I'm going to call it locationmanager.txt, okay? So we're going to track, we're going to try to find where this stuff is. So. I'm going to do open, and I'm going to open my gingerbread. So I'm, we're modifying a framework. Uh, we're modifying a framework. So which direct directory should I start? It's my search. How about framework? More specifically, how about framework base? Even more specifically, maybe how about framework-based location, okay? okay? So I'm gonna open that. So there's my framework-based location. So now we are looking for the last known location. So I'm just gonna see where that stuff, I'm not even gonna uh, think too much. So I'm gonna start, do a uh, find and find in project, okay? And I'm gonna look for get last known location. I actually already did it, right? So get last known location. Bam, search. So that's where it comes from. 
we have a location manager, okay, and we have the AIDL file. Surprise, surprise, right? So location manager, that's what we call, right? In our code, in our code, our location activity calls location manager get last known location, okay? So let me let me um, let me document this. So I'm gonna say like this. So so that you kind of so let me document it. So packages apps is the packages apps was the directory packages apps that location manager uh, location demo right. So that's what we that's our code is. S, uh, SRC, right? Com example location activity, okay. Dot Java, okay. Calls location manager get last known location, right? At line, uh, what line number is that? It's line 28. Line 28, okay. So that's what we call, I don't know, how do I say call? I'll say So that okay, so that's what we call location manager get last known location. Sounds good? Okay, so that's step one. That's the first thing. Step two, we look at location manager. Okay. So location manager is open right here. Location manager. Bam. Get last known location. Okay, get last known location. Okay, so here it is. So get last known location is line uh, ten fifteen, right? And location manager is located in frameworks base location. I just say location manager. <coughs> Frameworks based location, Java Android location. Okay, so frameworks based location, Java Android location, location manager, Java, right? Line 1015, right? And that's what we call, uh, we call, no, it's not even called that, but we call the um, Service get last known location. Now, what is this service? What do you think this service is? I mean, I can look around, but we. You, what's your What's your guess? Notice that we are catching remote exception. Does that look familiar? Right. So there's probably an AIDL file. Right. Okay, so that is calling the AIDL file, which is saying here there's something called location get last known location. Okay. So now the question is what is implementing this AIDL file? Right. So iLocation Manager AIDL. So let me uh, just specify that as well. iLocation Manager AIDL, and that and that is on line sixty three, right? Sixty three. And that is now calling or is being implemented by something. So now the question is, where is this file, right? Uh, who, who, who is implementing this file? So what's, a, what's the naming convention? If you couldn't figure out uh, what's implementing this file, what would be the naming con convention for this? Uh, 
for a look um, location man, uh, manager, right? What would be implementing this file? How do we find that? What, what's that? It's a service somewhere, right? So it's not media, but uh, it's probably under services, right? Java com Android server location manager service. Okay, that that's where it is. So let me let me uh, document that. So we're now in frameworks base services. Let's calling. Uh, Location manager <coughs> service. So, fr uh, frame frameworks base services. Okay, and then um, and then it's in Java. Notice that again. Uh, hopefully, you guys kind of notice certain things repeat themselves. So, notice that we have Java and JNI again, one next to each other, right? Okay. So, so that makes it easy. Now, inside of Java, notice that we have com Android server. So what's the difference between Android dot location and com dot Android dot and then stuff? Why certain why are certain things in com Android, other things are in Android dot? What's the difference? So things that are in Android dot are exposed as a public API. That is basically means that it's available to developers. Com dot Android is private stuff, right? So it's not exposed. Nobody should be using it directly. So this stuff here, nobody should be do using directly. So we can freely make changes, and it shouldn't affect anyone's application, right? Um, in terms of linking to it, quote unquote linking to it, right? So com Android server, right? So did I write it down? Uh, services, so Java, com Android server, and then location manager, is it location manager server, uh, location manager service, service.java. And we have that file open, okay? So that's line 1677. Sixteen seventy-seven. Okay, so what are we doing in this line? Let's see. So we're logging, slog, right? Um, then we're running get last known location locked. Okay, that's what we're calling. What do you think this is? Underscore. But yeah, that that usually means it's a private, right? So it's it's uh it's basically provided right here. That last known location. Okay, so let me document that. Provided, right? Okay. So that's calling this guy, which is then calling M provider. Uh, and providers by name. By the way, this is where we're enforcing permissions. So if you did not have access location, uh, access permission, this is where we would get the exception. Okay, that's what's enforcing the permission in this case. So provider, provider by name, get provider, gets the provider, if, uh, provider interface, if the provider does not exist, returns this, M last known uh, last known location. So we are now looking for what this is. M last known location, and and that's basically um, probably some kind of hash table. Yeah, it is. So see, there's a hash table that says last known location. Put name now or name provider. So this is basically what's making uh, creating that. And last known location set entries. So it's basically a map of locations, right? 
So we can now keep looking for this further down in the code where this, this comes. See, it's a cache map. Okay. So this updates the last known location for a provider. So this is adding test providers. If we want to, cannot mark the location provider, right? Um, so this is putting a provider and so on. So if I modified, for example, something here, So I could I could basically return a fake location here. Uh, the problem is that so I could do a return a new location, right? And then I could I could set some properties of that location. Um, the problem, well, there's no problem. So now what what does the location look like? How do I create location? What do you think location class would do? <coughs> just for fun, any guesses? These are the mock. These are the providers, right? Various providers. Um, <coughs> would that be under services? It wouldn't. Location probably would be probably under here. Java. Is it public or private? Which directory do I go down? This is very. So it's public, right? So it would be under uh, Android, not under com, right? This would be private. So com. Android internal would be private. Android location would be public, right? So this is where I would expect to find location, and there it is, right? Okay. So so these are our private properties. Dump. Let's see location string provider location location set location reset convert. Right, so I could just prov I, mean, I could create a uh, a dummy location, for example. Here, it's a new location for location manager dot g gps location a gps provider, <coughs> right? Something like that, um, and then I could uh, probably set some properties on the location as well. Set location, I can reset. Set time, set provider, set latitude, set latitude. So I could do um, I could do something like this. Fake location dot set something right. Fake location dot. What's the other one? Not set get but set right, and then set latitude. So we can put some numbers here. I don't know, minus 99 and minus 99 or something like that, right? Or um, plus 99, something like that. Just something fake, okay? And then I'm going to say return fake location. Um, and I'm going to comment this one out. So this is our lower code that we, we entered. So, you know, on line 1705, for instance. So I'm going to document that. So basically...
1705 implement implemented fake location okay so how do you build this now I mean, I would in this case we change sub substantially a lot of stuff, right? So I would actually need to do a, um, a make from um, J4. Um, so this should actually pick it up, right? The make file and re remake everything. But this is gonna take a long time. Not to, I mean, it's going to take like 15, 20 minutes, 15 minutes maybe or something. Okay. I, I may have to do a make in actual uh, frameworks directory. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not. But, uh, or delete my system image because it doesn't know that, that it needs it. Okay. But that would eventually change all that and, you know, tell us that, give us a fake location. So is, is that kind of making sense how to look around this? So you get, you, you guys able to follow at least in the source, to look around the source? Yeah, you were, okay. Anybody else? So that's why I said, I mean, you, you may not be able to, to do a, uh, see it's doing a compile, right? So now it's compiling. Okay, so yes, we didn't have to change it. So that's gonna do a build. Um, so we didn't, uh, so basically, um, we, the, um, we, that's how you would modify a framework, right? Now, because you don't have all the tools and everything, but at least you know where to look for stuff, right? So I'm going to let that compile in the meantime. Um, so just to kind of, so this is basically audio framework this is the camera framework that we talked about, right? It's a very similar sort of idea that we do. You guys saw those pictures. Uh, creating an audio driver. If you were to create your own audio driver, this is what you would do. So you would create your own. You would have to implement what's uh, the audio hardware interface, right? Uh, you would need to create um, ultimately the new lib audio file, right? And then you would need to specify that you have it and you would put it in a specific place so it gets built with that. Okay. This this is a sample make file, what it could look like if you're building audio driver for instance. <coughs> camera library, building a camera library, same idea. Right? That's a sample driver for the camera library. So, so that's basically um, that's basically that. So, did you guys does this does this make sense? How to modify framework? How to build the entire source? How to get it all uh, you know attached to the emulator and and test it? Yeah. 